So I'm actually not sure how many of my viewers are old enough to really remember the impact that Bill O'Reilly had on American political discourse. But if you're not familiar with him, this is a former Fox News host who was forced to resign back in 2017 following an advertiser boycott of Fox News that materialized in response to allegations of sexual harassment against him. Now, we could go down memory lane and talk about his idiotic conspiracy theories, his global warming denialism, his attack on rap music, or how how his stochastic terrorism towards an abortion doctor actually led to that doctor's assassination, but he's no longer relevant enough to really warrant a deep dive. But if you don't know about him, the TLDR is that basically he's a conservative commentator. He was one of the most popular ones and influential ones, similar to Rush Limbaugh, and he's a bad person. But the reason why we're talking about this irrelevant person today is because of a very funny reason. Leopards ate his face after he voted for the leopards eating people's faces party and never expected the leopards to eat his face. So let me explain. Florida, as you all know, is a state with a law known as Don't Say Gay, which facilitates the banning of books deemed inappropriate by parents. Now, the goal of the law obviously is to target LGBTQ plus material, but the text of the law couldn't specifically say that that's what it was doing since that would be obviously unconstitutional. So basically, the law allows parents to challenge virtually anything that they view as inappropriate in classrooms. Sometimes that includes books that conservatives wouldn't expect, like the Bible. In fact, one parent challenged the Bible in Utah under their book ban law, and it was temporarily banned as a result. But when it comes to Florida's book ban law, well, guess what? Bill O'Reilly's books were the targets, and uh, they've been removed from school libraries in at least one district. Newsweek reports on Thursday, the Florida Freedom to Read Project obtained a list of over 1,000 book titles that were temporarily removed from the Escambia County School District pending an investigation. Two of the books on the list were written by O'Reilly, the conservative pundit titled Killing Jesus, A History and Killing Reagan, The Violent Assault That Changed a Presidency. In a statement to the Pensacola News Journal, a spokesperson person for Escambia Schools said that the books have not been permanently banned, but instead are under review to ensure compliance with the new legislation, which was previously signed by GOP presidential candidate and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. The legislation seeks to limit books and other materials alleged to contain pornography or obscene depictions of sexual content in the state's schools. Now, Bill O'Reilly's books might not necessarily be sexual in nature, but I mean, we don't know why they were challenged in the first place. It could contain violence. That could be one of the reasons why they're pulled. Uh, there could be depictions of sex in these books. I don't necessarily know. I know that the target audience obviously is not children. These are books for conservative adults. So it's hard to say what's in it. I know that his Killing Reagan book uh, does talk about the assassination attempt, if I'm correct. So, you know, that could be deemed inappropriate if his book Killing Jesus is actually about Jesus being crucified, then let's just say that the passion of the Christ was rated R for a reason. So, I mean, if parents are allowed to challenge inappropriate books, it's not inconceivable that Bill O'Reilly's books could also be targeted as inappropriate by some parents. But in response to this, Bill O'Reilly is fucking pissed. He tweeted out, a Florida county removes my books, killing Jesus and killing Reagan from school libraries. Preposterous. We are investigating and are seeking comment from Governor Ron DeSantis. This will not stand. And he added, things are getting crazy with book banning in Florida. Two killing books under fire. Now, here's what he said to Newsweek. They continue, quote, it's absurd, O'Reilly told Newsweek on Friday. O'Reilly also said that he and his team also plan to investigate this, adding, that he will find out exactly who made the decisions to temporarily take them out of the library in this county. I'm going to put their pictures up on television and on my website, and I'm going to ask them for a detailed explanation of why they did that. So he is basically <laughs> frothing at the mouth, shitting his pants, asking to talk to the manager of Florida, demanding action at once. And it's just, it's so hilarious to me because he's having this overreaction after, guess what? He supported this law. Not just book bans in general. He supported this specific law in Florida. The Don't Say Gay Law. <laughs> Isn't it so funny the way that the universe works sometimes? This is amazing. 
Now, the problem here with Bill O'Reilly and supporters of book bans in general is that they can never conceive of situations where the books that they like or the books that they've written would be deemed inappropriate by other parents. Now, he indirectly acknowledges the hypocrisy here by discussing his previous support for this Florida law that got his books banned. Here's what he says, quote, when DeSantis signed the book law, I supported the theme because there was abuse going on in Florida. There were far left progressive people trying to impose an agenda on children. There's no doubt about it. And the state has an obligation to protect children. But the wording of the law was far too nebulous in Tallahassee. O'Reilly told Newsweek. So that law needs to be tightened up. DeSantis needs to come out publicly and say, this is insane. We're not going to cooperate with this and we're going to investigate the people who did it, O'Reilly said. Yeah, I'm sure that the governor of Florida, who's also running for president right now, is going to make this his top priority. The entitlement of these people is just, that's a different story for a different day, but I've got to point it out. But I mean, listen, I understand that he's hysterical right now, but He's not thinking logically. He's not understanding why DeSantis needed this law to be vague. He doesn't realize that if this law were too specific and too explicit about who they're targeting, that could be its undoing. These laws are usually purposefully vague for a reason. Bill O'Reilly should know this, but he's not thinking right now. I mean, if you explicitly say only LGBTQ plus books can be challenged, that obviously violates the Constitution. So you have to word it as vaguely as possible. That's why they did it. This is what LGBTQ plus activists warned about before this law went into effect. And guess what? These warnings were not heeded. And now all kinds of books are being banned in Florida, not just LGBTQ plus books, books about race. History books, books that are completely innocuous, books about immigration and the experiences of immigrants. I mean, it's just a really large net. Now, that might cast a bigger net by wording these book ban laws that way, but that's kind of how they skirt legal accountability because they are unconstitutional. Now, I would argue that these book bans are still unconstitutional, but if you're going to get it to pass when it comes to judicial scrutiny, you word it vaguely, and that's what he did. That's how he's trying to get it to stick. But I mean, these conservatives, they want to have it both ways. They want it to be very specific, but also they want it to be constitutional. But it's not. It's not It's not constitutional regardless. But if it's going to be constitutional, you can't just say, hey, guys, we're targeting gays and minority people. But if you know anything about Bill O'Reilly, he is a self-centered prick. And he can't conceive of the idea that what is and isn't appropriate is highly subjective. But since his temper tantrum was so public, people weighed in. They noticed his crying and they had a lot to say in response, i.e. they mocked him ruthlessly. For example, Lance from the Surfs chimed in saying, and Jesus wept. Brian Tyler Cohen responded saying, leopards, faces, ETC. This person says, I never thought the censors would ban my book. Local man who supported taking books totally out of context to pull them from shelves, now angry that his book was taken out of context and pulled from shelves. Truly shocking, more at 10. These laws were supposed to target the people I don't agree with, not me, this is preposterous. <laughs> it's almost as if being in favor of banning books has backfired on you, Bill. Hmm. Oh, look who doesn't want to lay in the bed they helped make. The dog caught the car. Wait, I thought Bill O'Reilly died like five years ago. <laughs> Unfortunately not. And that last one is probably my favorite, even though it got no love. But I mean, it was a banger. All of those were bangers. But I mean, uh, yeah. What else is there to say about this story? Bill O'Reilly refuses to lie in the bed that he helped make. But one last thing I do want to point out is I checked out his Twitter profile because I saw him whining. So I figured, hey, what's he up to? And I discovered that he has another book in his killing series titled Killing the Witches, which has not yet been banned to my knowledge. So I'm really worried that somebody's going to end up challenging that book as well, or worse, challenging his other books in school districts across the country that have these book ban laws. I think that would be absolutely terrible and definitely not funny if that happened. But I mean, who knows? You know, when you open the door to these types of book banning, you never know where it's going to go. So I'm crossing my fingers that his other books don't get banned as well. But I mean, on a serious note, eat shit, Bill. Woke mom.